Well, we have a stated dividend policy in which we say to our stockholders that um, if we cannot put, if we have excess capital, we believe we have, and we cannot put that to work into value creating opportunities, it goes back to stockholders over time. And as a matter of rational and disciplined capital management, that's the reason why we took the decision today. We've just said about Commerce Bank and everything we've just said about concern about financial markets. I can't believe a man of your skills can't find more assets such as the acquisition of the Echon Life business in the Czech Republic, uh, the life insurance and pension business in Slovakia as well. There must be many more opportunities like that given these depressed financial markets. We are always interested to go for M&A opportunity if we find an opportunity that uh, strengthens the platform uh, with a priority on existing businesses. Uh, but M&A is a matter of opportunity and discipline. And therefore, we always want to make sure that any M&A opportunity is in line with our financial and non-financial criteria. And then if we have access capital that we feel we cannot deploy uh, in, a, in a good and value-creating way, then we bring it back to stockholders over time, and that's the reason for the buyback today. And just one more from me before Karen comes in. Um, your comments from the third quarter were talking about claims experience, incredibly volatile by nature. I guess, Lard, that hasn't changed very much in the last quarter. Well, actually, we've seen in the non-life business a very good quarter with a 96.4% combined ratio. And now we have seen underlying a five quarter on a row, a combined ratio that has been improving, which is part and parcel of our plan that we announced a year and a half ago to structurally improve the combined ratio to levels below, below 97%. Can I ask you about Japan and Europe? These were the two weak spots in the numbers last time round. And in your report card today, there is a suggestion that sales had improved in the last two months of 2018 in Japan at least. So are you seeing some improvement in both Japan and Europe at this stage? Uh, we, we see uh, in Europe that, uh, and in Japan that our overall commercial momentum over the year has been very good and that our value new business, the measure of the profitability of that new business, has increased with 13 percent for the full year. Uh, we indeed see in Japan data coming out that the economy uh, is doing better and that in Europe, of course, it is a patchy, uh, a patchy environment, but we continue to help our clients and the sales uh, results overall in terms of volume are slightly lower, but the profitability and margin improvement was uh, quite, uh, quite strong. Can I just uh, extract a comment on some of the headwinds that might be confronting you this year? There seems to be a level of uncertainty still around what central banks might do with their exit program from extraordinary monetary policy. On top of that, we've had a, a fairly weak start across uh, some of the European economies with pro projections much lower from the European Commission. How concerned are you about the outlook? Well, if you look at what's happened over the last couple of months, we saw investors moving from fear uh, for recession to hopes for recovery. Uh, that's more driven by sentiment. Uh, what we've also seen is that a strong uh, American economy, we've seen some weaker results coming out of Europe, but we also believe that there will be budgetary expansion measures taken in the larger European countries. And we've seen central banks taking a more cautious stance and pausing uh, and a pausing stance at this point in time. These bursts of volatility we've seen in the past, we'll probably have them in the future as well. But we are a long-term investor, and we at all times make sure that we cater for many scenarios so that we can keep our clients' money safe.